Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the fifth video of Chapter 10, which is Apply Other Angle Relationships in Circles. We have one objective. We're going to calculate the values of angles when the vertex is outside or inside the circle. So far, we've calculated angles where the vertex is at the center. Those are called central angles. We've also calculated the measures of angles where the vertex is on the circle. Those are called inscribed angles. We're going to le learn two other formulas today. So first, I would like to start with example one. This is a review. It's not a problem that you've seen before, but you should know how to do it. So the hint that I gave you is, where is the vertex of the angle? Well, our vertex is at B. So our vertex is on the circle. Okay, so we've learned this before. When the vertex is on the circle, what's the relationship between the angle and the arc? Well, vertex on the circle, if I can remind you, the angle is one half of the arc. In this case, our angle is 5x, that's angle CBD. So I'm going to have 5x equals 1 half, and then the arc that it intercepts is DAB, the 9x plus 20. Personally, I don't really like fractions, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. On the left side, that cancels out my 1 half, and I'm left with just 9x plus 20. 2 times 5x on the left side gives me 10x. If I subtract 9x, I get x equals 20. So this is just a new figure for an idea that we already know. When the vertex is on the circle, the angle is going to be half of the arc. Now moving on to example 2 and example 2.5, these involve a new formula. Okay, so it says circle formula sheet. Angle formula when the vertex is inside the circle. Okay, vertex inside the circle, but not at the center. The angle is one half of arc one plus arc two. And one note is these are the arcs that I'm going to say sandwich the angle. So the best thing, I think, is just to jump right in. So example two, we see we have the vertex inside the circle. So the vertex is right here, but it's not necessarily at the center. If the vertex was at the center, the angle would just be equal to the arc. That's a central angle. Okay, so the, the angle itself, so angle one, is going to be equal to one half the two arcs that sandwich it. So if this is my angle one, this arc is like one piece of the bread, this arc is like the other piece of the bread. So it's going to be 1 half of 120 add 98. So I get the measure of angle 1 is 1 half of 218. 1 half of 218 is going to give me 109 degrees. Okay, let's look at example 2.5. Again, this time we have an angle and we have two arcs. The angle is equal to one half the two arcs that sandwich it, the sum of those arcs. Okay, looking at this angle 102 that I have, the two arcs that sandwich that angle are arc BC and AD. Now I know the angle, but I don't know either arc. Looking at this arc Y and this arc 95, those sandwich this little angle right here. So I really need that angle that I just marked in red. Well, I see that I have a straight line, so I know 102 and that red angle are going to be supplementary. So if I take 180 and I subtract 102, I get 78. So this little red angle is 78. Now I'm ready to use that formula above. So the angle is equal to 78 equals 1 half the two arcs that sandwich it. So that's going to be y plus 95. Again, I don't really like the 1 half, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. The left side becomes 156. On the right side, the 1 half and the 2 cancel, and I'm left with y plus 95. If I subtract 95 from both sides, I get y equals 61 degrees. Okay, so again, what's really important to remember is that angle has to be sandwiched in between the two arcs. So the example we just looked at, the 102, is sandwiched in between the blue arcs. The 78 is sandwiched in between the red arcs. 
So I have an example that I would like you to try. If you could right now, pause the video and try this one on your own, please. I would like you to calculate the measure of angle one. Good luck. Okay, let's see how we did. We'll notice in this figure that the vertex is inside the circle, right here, but it's not at the center. So I'm going to use the formula above. The angle is equal to one half the sum of the arcs. Well, angle one is sandwiched by this arc and by this arc. Now I don't know either of those arcs. I know these arcs in blue and those sandwich this angle right here or this angle right here. Those are going to be congruent because they're vertical angles. So I'm going to try to find those angles instead. I'm going to mark it as x. In this case, x is one half of the arcs that sandwich it. So 53 add 41. So I get x is equal to one half of 94. So in this case, x equals 47. Now, okay, now I know that angle one is going to be supplementary to x. They form a right angle. So angle one plus 47 degrees is going to be 180. If I subtract 47, I get angle one equals 133 degrees. Hopefully you got that one right. If not, that's okay. Hopefully you see what mistake you made. If you would please flip the page. Okay, now we're going to move on to our next formula. This is going to go on your formula sheet. It's the angle formula when the vertex is outside of the circle. If the vertex is outside of the circle, the angle is equal to one half big arc subtract little arc. Okay, so big arc subtract little arc. So example three actually has two little examples there, so we're going to do both. So in the first example, our vertex is outside the circle. It's out here. So our angle is equal to, so angle one equals one half the big arc that it intercepts. So it intercepts this big arc, subtract the little arc that it intercepts. So subtract 34. In this case, I get angle one is equal to one half of 74. So I get angle one to be 37 degrees. Okay, let's look at the second example that falls under example three. So in this case, um, my vertex is still outside the circle, so I'm going to do one half big arc subtract little arc. I have my big arc is 243, but I don't have the little arc. So initially it kind of seems that I can't do this problem. Well, I need to think, what do I know about an entire circle? Well, I know that the whole circle is 360. So if I have one arc that's 243, once I add it to this other arc, which I'm going to call x, the sum is going to be 360. So I have x add 243 equals 360. If I subtract 243, I get x equals 117. Okay, so that's really what my little, little arc is. It's 117. So now I have angle 1 is equal to 1 half big arc, which is 243, subtract little arc, which is 117. So I get angle 1 is equal to 1 half of 126, which gives me angle 1 to be 63 degrees. Okay, so the next step is that we're going to add some more variables, variables in, make it a little difficult, a little more difficult at least. So let's look at example 4. It says find the value of x. Okay, so I'm going to notice that I have a vertex outside the circle. So my angle is going to be one half big arc subtract little arc. In this case, my angle is x plus 2.5. That's going to be equal to one half my big arc, which is 4x plus 5, minus my little arc, which is 50. Okay, so I'm going to start by simplifying that right side. So I have x plus 2.5 equals 1 half, 4x. I have 5 subtract 50, which is going to be negative 45. Okay, I don't like the fraction, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. 
On the right side, the 1 half and the 2 cancel. I'm left with 4x minus 45. On the right side, I have to distribute the 2. So I'm going to have 2 multiplied by x plus 2.5. This becomes 2x add 5, and then 4x minus 45. Okay, if I add 45 to the other side, I have 2x plus 50 equals 4x. I'm going to continue up here. Subtracting 2x, I get 50 equals 2x, and x equals 25. Okay, the next example I would like you to try on your own. You need to be very, very, very careful when carrying out the algebra here. It's very easy to make a mistake. Pause the video, try this one on your own, please. Good luck. Okay, let's see how we did. So, vertex outside the circle. So my angle is equal to, 54 is equal to, 1 half, big arc, which is 13x minus 6, subtract little arc, which is 5x plus 14. Again, remember it has to be the big arc and the little arc that the angle intercepts. So in other words, this arc has nothing to do with the problem because it's not contained within the angle. Okay, if you made a mistake, here's where I'm going to bet you made the mistake. Hopefully we remembered to distribute this negative. So I have 54 equals 1 half, 13x minus 6. When I distribute the negative, it becomes negative 5x subtract 14. Okay, I'm going to combine like terms. So I have 54 equals 1 half, 13x minus 5x. That's going to be 8x. Then I have negative 6 and negative 14. That's going to become negative 20. Okay, I don't really like that 1 half, so I'm going to multiply by 2 on both sides. 2 times 54 gives me 108. On the right side, 1 half and 2 cancel, and I'm left with 8x minus 20. Okay, I'm going to add 20 to both sides, so I get 128 equals 8x. Dividing by 8, I get x equals 16. If you got that right, great job. If you made a mistake, that's okay. I fully expected you to make a mistake. Um, but please remember that you have to distribute that negative because you will see this again in your classwork, on quiz, on the test. So just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. Okay, so that was our last example that you have to watch. Um, the objective was to calculate the value of angles when the vertex is outside or inside the circle. What I'm going to ask you to do is flip the page, please. Okay, so on this page is our extra examples, the ones that we normally do in class. But I'm going to tell you that you have two examples to do right now. You have example 6 and example 7 to do. When you come to class tomorrow, I'm going to be checking to make sure that you have both of these answers. Uh, and that, that you have both of these problems completed and that you have work for both. I will tell you the answer to number 7. For number 7, angle 1 equals 41 degrees. So if you don't get 41, you did something wrong. You also have to do problem 6. If you come with answers but no work, you will not get full credit for the video. Good luck!